Umar radiallahu ta'ala he says we were inculcating the reality of la ilaha illallah within our hearts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this human heart a very strange thing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to this effect within the human heart is a piece of flesh if this goes right the whole body is right if the human heart this piece of flesh goes wrong the whole body goes wrong the, this piece of flesh is the human heart it is rectified the whole body is rectified if the heart is corrupt the whole body is corrupt and the rectification rectification of the heart is that within within this heart should be only la ilaha illallah Thirteen years in Makkah Bukharma. The one making efforts is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And on whom efforts were being done, were being made, was Sahaba Ikram Ridwanullah alayhi majmain. And what heights of Iman did they attain? Ali radiallahu ta'ala no says, if all the curtains between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are withdrawn, even then there won't be the slightest increase of iman with me. Even now it is as if I am visualizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with my own eyes. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked one sahabi, how did you wake up in the morning? And his reply was, Ya Rasulullah, I woke up with the haqiqat of Iman. How do you say it? Ya Rasulullah, my condition has become such. In the daytime I am fasting. In the night time I am away from my bedding. Standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Praying And My condition has become such I can visualize The people of Jannat Greeting one another I can visualize the people of Jahannam Cursing one another As if the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in front of my eyes. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on hearing this said, O oh Harsa, you are the one whose heart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enlightened with the nur of iman, you maintain it. The reality of la ilaha illallah the one who recognizes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he won't leave Allah and go to something else not provisions not possessions not passions not positions he will run towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fafirru with Allah his only direction would be towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has recognized his Lord, his creator, his sustainer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one. He is alone. Allah has no companion. Allah has no partners. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no comparison, no resemblance. None like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is wahdahu la sharika lahu. None equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iman, that level of Iman. One Sahabi, he said, Ya Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have achieved the reality of Iman. And he started explaining how his condition was. Ya Rasulullah, 
the angel sitting on my shoulders writing my book of account i can hear with my ears the sound of the writing of the pen and allah subhanahu wa taala he demands from us we who have come later bring that level of iman which the sahaba had achieved that level of iman allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us in this dunya for a very very short time but with a purpose we have a purpose of our life and what is that purpose allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran wa ma khalaqtul jinna wal insa illa li'abud allah has created the jinn and ins for his ibadat worship worship is a comprehensive word it includes certain rituals but it embodies the whole life whatever we are doing and how to make ibadat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an ta'budu allah ka annaka tara fa in lam takun tara fa innahu yara you make ibadat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a manner with a feeling that you are visualizing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you cannot attain this feeling at least have this feeling that allah is watching us allah is looking at us worship Maulana Jalaluddin Rumi rahmatullahi alayhi he was asked what does a person gain from worship from worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his reply was a person he loses rather than gains what does he lose due to worshiping and pray and praying to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a man he loses his ego he loses his pride he loses his arrogance he loses his greed he loses the taste of sin he loses impatience and Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu in his tafsir he writes illa li'abudun in actual actuality it means illa li'arifun to recognize Allah who is our creator who is our lord and master who is nourishing us who is sustaining us to recognize allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la ilaha illa allah is the kalima of marifat of recognizing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the marifat of allah it is the most virtuous knowledge most exalted knowledge la ilaha illa allah this kalima starts with la there's a negation first a refusal first a denial first la whatever is besides allah has been made has been created the creator is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as the entire creation it needed allah's will to come into existence 
Similarly, the entire creation, it requires Allah's will to do anything. Makhluk, no matter how powerful it may appear, Makhluk, no matter how strong it may appear, Makhluk, no matter how lofty it may appear, it has no standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is Khaliq and the rest is Makhluk. Allah is Malik and the rest is Mamluk. To do anything, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is totally independent of his entire Makhluk. And the entire makhluk to do anything is totally dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Makhluk is makhluk. La ilaha illallah. This is the kalima of ma'rifat, of recognizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every nabi that came, every prophet that came, He had the same, same slogan. He called the people, Ya Yuhan Nas, Kulu la ilaha illallah tuflihu. O people, you recite la ilaha illallah and achieve success. La ilaha illallah is also the kalima of iman, the kalima of ikhlas. The kalima of Tawheed, this kalima is so weighty, so heavy. If this kalima is put on the seven heavens and the earth, because of its weight, the seven heavens and the earth would crumple down. La ilaha illallah, not merely words. It's a haqiqat, it's a reality. To achieve the reality of La ilaha illallah, every Nabi had to make his utmost efforts. Most of the time of the Anbiya alayhi salatu salam was spent in trying to bring the reality of La ilaha illallah within the hearts of the people. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he came last of all he is khatimun nabiyin 23 years of prophethood he spent 13 years in Makkah Mukarma 10 years in Madinah Munawwara the ulama say most Nearly most of the commandments they came in Madina Manavara. More time in Makkah. What was happening in Makkah Makarma? Umar radiallahu ta'ala he says, We were inculcating the reality of La ilaha illallah within our hearts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this human heart. A very strange thing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to this effect, within the human heart is a piece of flesh. If this goes right, the whole body is right. If the human heart, this piece of flesh goes wrong, the whole body goes wrong. The, this piece of flesh is the human heart. It is rectified, the whole body is rectified. If the heart is corrupt, the whole body is corrupt. And the rectification, rectification of the heart is that within, within this heart should be only La ilaha illallah. 13 years in Makkah Bukarma. The one making efforts is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
and on whom efforts were being done, were being made, was Sahaba Ikram Ridwanullah Alayhi Majmain. And what heights of Iman did they attain? Ali radiallahu ta'ala no says, if all the curtains between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are withdrawn, even then there won't be the slightest increase of Iman with me. Even now it is as if I am visualizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with my own eyes. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he asked one sahabi how did you wake up in the morning and his reply was Ya Rasulullah I woke up with the haqiqat of Iman how do you say it Ya Rasulullah my condition has become such in the daytime I am fasting in the night time I'm away from my bedding, standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praying, and my condition has become such I can visualize the people of Jannat greeting one another. I can visualize the people of Jahannam cursing one another as if the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in front of my eyes. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on hearing this said, O oh Harsa, you are the one whose heart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enlightened with the nur of iman, you maintain it. The reality of la ilaha illallah the one who recognizes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he won't leave Allah and go to something else not provisions not possessions not passions not positions he will run towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fafirru with Allah his only direction would be towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has recognized his Lord, his creator, his sustainer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one. He is alone. Allah has no companion. Allah has no partners. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no comparison, no resemblance. None like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is wahdahu la sharika lahu none equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iman, that level of Iman, one sahabi, he said, Ya Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have achieved the reality of Iman. And he started explaining how his condition was. Ya Rasulullah, the angel sitting on my shoulders, writing my book of account, I can hear with my ears the sound of the writing of the pen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He demands from us. We who have come later, bring that level of Iman which the Sahaba had achieved. That level of Iman. The Sahaba they asked, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how can one come to know that the reality of Iman has entered the heart? Or the light of Islam has come within the bosom. How to, how, come, how to know about it? Any signs? Any litmus? And the reply was, yes. There are three signs by means of which 
one can find out that the reality of Iman has come within the hearts. The first sign a disinclination towards this Darul Gurur, the house of deception, this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created this dunya he created the earth spread it planted mountains on it raised the skies without pillars then made rain fall from the clouds made vegetations and trees grow from the ground he split the oceans made the rivers flow he folded the darkness of the night into daylight, daylight and the daylight into the darkness of the night if till the day of Qayyama it had been only the darkness of night who besides Allah could have brought the daylight and if it had been daylight till the day of Qayama, who besides Allah could have bought the darkness of the night? He made a system, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has created this dunya, is saying this dunya is lahulab, is play and amusement. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is calling it as Darul Ghurur, the house of deception. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us this dunya has no value in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator. If this dunya had the value even of a wing of a mosquito, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah would not have given a single drop to drink to the disbelievers. A single drop of water to drink. This dunya has no value in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, but it is very valuable. This dunya on this earthly life depends what would be our status in the year after? Where will be this dunya? The love of this dunya, it is the root cause of every evil. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned us, a time is going to come on my ummah. As the hungry people, they jump on food. The disbelievers would jump on my ummah. The Sahaba they asked, Ya Rasulullah, what would happen? Would the Muslims of that time be very few in number? The reply was no, they would be in a very large number, very large number. Today, the surveys, they say, every fifth person on the earth today is he who calls himself a Muslim. They will be in a very large number. But their status would be like the foam on the sea. The waves of the sea. When they come to the shore, they form a foam. The next wave comes, throws that foam on the other side. The third wave comes, and from there, from the third side to the, to the second side, the foam is thrown. The Sahaba, they asked, Ya Rasulullah, why would be this status of the Muslims of that time? And the reply was, a disease of Wahan would become epidemic amongst them. 
the sahaba they asked ya rasulullah what is the disease of wahan the reply was hubbud dunya wa karahiyatul maut the love of this dunya and the fear of death when this disease creeps in the hearts of my ummah then my ummah stands no chance to face the enemies rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he warned us beware of this dunya it does more magic rather than harut and marut this dunya is the house for whom who has no house in the hereafter this dunya is the wealth for whom who has no wealth in the hereafter and he is the one to accumulate wealth in this dunya who has no intellect at all rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is sayyid ibn di adam the best the best in the progeny of adam alayhi salam rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is sayyidul awwalin sayyidul akhirin rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is imamul anbiya la yumkin sana kama kana haqqahu baad az khuda buzurg tu hi kissa mukhtasir how was the house of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala na she says in the house in which i lived with rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam for 8 years that hujra it was a part of jannat 8 years how big it was and aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala na she says if we got up the roof of the house nearly touched our heads and if the night time rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam got engaged in salah and when the time used to come for sajda Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to put his blessed hand on my feet and then I used to come to know the time for sajda has come I used to withdraw my feet make space for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to make sajda 8 years in that house and aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala na she says when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam departed from us in that very same house his blessed grave was made and she says i continued living in that house two more years went by when abu bakr radhiyallahu ta'ala he passed away again in that very same house his grave was made and aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala na she says i continued living in that house eight years more ten years more a small house two graves and aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala she says when umar radhiyallahu ta'ala he was martyred in that very same house his grave was made small house and three blessed graves aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala she says then i left the house to whom she was talking the lady said well of course no room left for you now she said no no not because of this not because of this first my husband's grave was made then my father's grave was there 
when an amahram stranger's grave was made because of modesty i left that house and aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala she says whenever i came to visit these blessed graves i used to wrap a big cloth over me so that nobody could recognize me this was the house and food aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala she says we saw one moon then we saw the second moon then we saw the third moon two months consecutively we had no need to kindle the fire to cook food because we had not then how did you go about and she says asmadan dates and water and aisha radhiyallahu anha she says even this rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam never had to his bellies will never ever and when was this condition till when aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala she says when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he departed from us he passed away that very day night came a desire rose within me an intense desire to have a glimpse of rasulullah's face but there was no oil in my house to lit the lamp i went to our neighbor's house on loan i got some some oil on with this loan i ignited i lit my house's lamp and then i saw the illuminating face of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the lady she was talking the lady said yes that night you didn't have enough oil to light your house's lamp and she said if we had that hadn't i would have drunk it because of 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 hunger that means there was nothing even to eat in that house that night and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam what he the condition that came were all opted for he wanted it jibril alaihi salam once came and said ya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you want you can be a malik an nabi along with prophethood you can become a king there were certain prophets Suleiman alayhi salam they were kings they were prophets Dawud alayhi salam Yusuf alayhi salam if you want you can be a malik an nabi oh if you want you can be an abd an nabi along with prophethood be a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam looked at Jibril alayhi salam Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says to this effect I have two advisers in the heavens and two advisers on the ground the two advisers are in the heaven Jibril alayhi salam Mikail alayhi salam and the two advisers I have on the ground are Abu Bakr radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu and Umar radhiyallahu ta'ala So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he looked at Jibril alaihi salam and Jibril alaihi salam with his hand he made a sign down Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam opted for Abd al-Nabi Jibril alaihi salam came in Makkah mukarrama and said ya Rasulullah if you want you a mount of makkah can be turned into gold for you and wherever you go the mount of gold would move along with you on this rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam made dua oh allah give me enough to eat one day 
so that I can straighten my back and be thankful to you. And the other day, I go without food so that I make sabr with you. And motivated the entire ummah. Kun fit dunya ka anna ka gharib wa abiru sabil. Live your life in this dunya like a traveler, rather like a roadside traveler. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to this effect, I don't fear famine on my ummah. What I fear is that the world with all its luxuries would open up on my ummah. There is a fitna for every ummah, a test for every ummah. And the fitna for my ummah is these worldly things, materialistic things. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once told Aisha radiallahu ta'ala na, O oh Aisha, if you desire to meet me on the day of judgment, do three things. Don't throw your clothes away until they are patched. If you refrain from sitting amongst those, the company of the rich people, and live your life in this dunya like a traveler. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to this effect, when my ummah would consider this dunya a valuable thing, then the value of deen would be erased from their hearts. The first sign that the reality of Iman has entered the heart, the haqeeqat of Iman. Maulana Yusuf Khan Delvi Rahmatullah was saying, the words of Iman are very important. They are very precious. They are very valuable. But words are merely words. They direct towards the haqeeqat. Haqeeqat is something else. And to achieve that haqeeqat, one has to make efforts, qurbani, sacrifice, struggle and strive. So the first sign, a disinclination towards this darul gurur, towards this dunya. And the second sign, that iman with its haqiqat, with its reality, has entered the heart is a love for Darul Khulud, the place where we are going forever and ever. Akhirat, it is coming. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to this effect every Nabi that came informed his ummah about the hereafter, about akhirat. But the amount of information that I have given about akhirat, no previous Nabi gave this amount of information. And said to this effect, this dunya has been created for you. A dunya khuliqat lakum. But already he said, wa innakum khuliqtum lil akhirat. You have been created for the Akhirat, the hereafter, the life that is going to come after death, the eternal life. Death is not the end. It is a part of a continuum that stretches into eternity forever and ever. Akhirat the love for the, for the hereafter. Anas bin Nazar radiallahu ta'ala he asked, Ya Rasulullah, if here in Ahud, I lay down my life, I give my life, I'll go into Akhirat, what will I achieve? 
And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to this effect, you will enter Jannat. Jannat, the place of luxuries, beautiful mansions, where every desire would be, would be fulfilled. No fatigue, no old age. Anas bin Nazar said, if I lay down my life, I'll go into Jannat. Immediately on his ride, he started running towards Mount Uhud, crying, saying, by Allah, I can smell the fragrance of Jannat beyond this mount. And he was actually smelling that fragrance. Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu on his deathbed his wife started weeping, sobbing, crying. What happened? You are departing from us. And Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said this is the occasion to celebrate, not to weep, not to cry. The time has arrived when I'm going to meet my Lord and Master. I'm going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The time has come when I'm going to meet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm going to meet my friends and companions. Who have left me and gone be before me. Death, when they came to know, at one occasion, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in his house, that blessed house, that hujra. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala was there. Fatima radiallahu ta'ala, she was there. A small house. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he whispered something in the ears of Fatima radiallahu ta'ala she started weeping then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he again said something and whispered in the, uh, in the ears of Fatima radiallahu ta'ala she stopped weeping and Fatima radiallahu ta'ala, he started smiling. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went away. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala, he asked Fatima, O oh, Fatima, what did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tell you? You started weeping. And then again, after some time, you stopped weeping and you started smiling. Fatima radiallahu ta'ala, she said, well, if Rasulullah Sallallahu had wanted that you should also know, why did he all, why did he say all this within my ears? Why did he whispered? He should have spoken aloud, but he didn't want you to know about it. Time passed away. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam departed. Passed away. In that very same house now. An occasion came. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala, she was there. Fatima radiallahu ta'ala, she was there. And this blessed grave, Aisha radiallahu she again asked, Oh Fatima, do you remember that time? When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said something in your ears. You started weeping. Then after some time he again said something. And you, start, you stopped weeping in... And on the contrary, you started smiling. And I had asked once, you had refused. Now what is there? Rasulullah Sasma has departed. You can tell me. And Fatima radiallahu ta'ala, she said, yes. Now there is no harm in telling you. No loss in telling you, I'll tell you. First time, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whispered in my ears, Oh Fatima, the time to leave you has come. The time to leave this dunya has come. The time to meet my Lord, my Creator has come. 
when rasulullah sallam said this i started weeping rasulullah sallam my father is departing from me rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is departing from me then very soon he said don't weep immediately after me the closest relative that would come and meet me would be you i started smiling two ladies blessed ladies a grave now it is in their mind fatima radhiyallahu anha is going now to die leave but they were happy darul khulud where we have to go forever and ever there's no denial about it we have to enter akhirat the information given by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the ummah and this dunya is the preparation for the year after for the akhirat prepare for it because we are going to die the third sign ya to koi bhari nahi hai sign ka kaise pata chalega the third sign that the reality of iman has entered the heart the first sign a disinclination towards this darul ghurur towards this dunya a love for the year after darul khulud and the third sign when a person is in preparation for death before it comes the preparation of death be prepared when is death going to come who can tell not a single second can be trusted in this dunya but it is coming there can be people who can deny about the hereafter what is going to happen after death there can be people but there can be no one to deny that death is coming undeniable irrefutable death is coming when two thirds of the night used to go by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to come to masjid an nabi and make an announcement o oh people remember allah o oh people remember allah o oh people remember allah for the quake of the year after is coming the trumpet of sur is going to be blown and death with all its hardships is drawing closer and closer death with all its hardships ali ali radhiyallahu ta'ala he was asked oh ali can you describe the hardship of death and ali radhiyallahu ta'ala said yes the pain of 300 swords simultaneously on a body this pain is less and the pain of death is more aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala she says when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was departing from us a bowl of water was beside him and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was placing his blessed hand in that bowl of water wiping his face and saying oh allah make the difficulty of death easy on me allah says in the quran kullu nafsin zaikatul maut every living soul is going to taste the bitterness of death every living soul we all are going to die we have to sheikh al hadith mana zakaria sahab rahmatullah alay in his book of fazail al sadqat he has written 
a group of pious people belonging to Bani Israel. They came in a graveyard and made a dua. Oh Allah, you open a grave for us so that we may directly ask that person of the grave, what did he encounter? What conditions did he, did he, did, did he go under? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he answered their dua. A person appeared from the grave and he said, what do you want to ask me? Let me tell you, 50 years have gone by since I died, but the pangs of death can still be felt within me. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to this effect, he is the wisest of all who remembers death most and prepares for it before it comes. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam motivated the entire ummah. Remember death. Hazimul Lazat, the break of the luxuries. Aisha radiallahu and she asked, Ya Rasulullah, is there any way that a person can attain martyrdom without going on the battlefield? And Rasulullah replied, Yes. The one who remembers yet 20 times, 25 times in this manner, Allahumma barikli fil maut wa fi ma ba'd al maut. Allahumma barikli fil maut wa fi ma ba'd al maut. Daily, he will, when he dies, he will attain martyrdom. Remember death, it is coming. We are so absorbed in our worldly affairs, our daily routine. We have forgotten about death. But death has not forgotten us. When the ordained hour would come, the lungs would stop breathing, the heart would stop thumping, it will be a dead body. Put on a bar. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked the Sahaba, remember that, asked someone, Sahabi, can you tell me when death is going to come? And his reply was, Ya Rasulullah, when I pray, make salah, I consider this salah to be the last of my life. On this, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said to this effect, but what I say is, after the completion of my salah, I turn my face on one side to say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I'm not at all sure whether, I, whether I, I, would, I would have the occasion to turn my face on the other side. Not a single moment can be, can be trusted of this dunya's life. And death is coming. We are going to die. Be prepared for it. A sahabi asked, Ya Rasulullah, when is Qiyamat going to come? Rasulullah asked him, What preparation have you done for Qiyamat that you are asking me when Qiyamat is going to come? He said, Ya Rasulullah, not many amal. But the love of Allah and the love of His Prophet, they are deeply rooted within my heart. On this Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this effect, with whom you love on the day of judgment, you would be resurrected, resurrected and be amongst them. So this work of Tabligh, Maulana Ilyas Sahib Rahmatullah in his quotations is, I have not named this work as Tablighi Jamaat, 
people have started calling it if i had the option to name this work this effort i would have named it as tehreek e iman to take out of false yaqeen from the makhluk and bring it on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the true sovereign the one who is doing everything not a single leaf on the earth can move without his will and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the last of all the prophets he transferred the invitation towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards his ummah kul hadhihi sabili adu ila allah ala basiratin ana wa man ittaba'ni the ummah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is now responsible the responsibility lies on us the obligation we are here to invite the rest of the people towards the oneness and greatness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to invite the people towards obeying the commandments of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to following the tariq of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is this ummat and allah has praised us kuntum khaira ummatin ukhriyat lin nas we are the best of the ummat why we have been taken out for the benefit of humanity and mankind guide them show them teach them this is the ummat who is going to do it for this we have this ishtima kab tak rahega ishtima this ishtima would continue till sunday zohar so all are requested to be here in this ishtima participate in it bring your friends in, be in this environment and let every muslim have this consciousness that i am the ummati of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and i have a responsibility to fulfill to act upon the deen of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and bring the obedience of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevail over the entire surface of the earth So all of you are ready for that inshallah